Good morning and happy Thanksgiving. That's right, Thanksgiving 2020. I love it. It's an exciting time with so many things going on. It is great to be here and to worship with all of you. But as has become the tradition over the last few years, I need to impart maybe a little bit of Thanksgiving wisdom for all of you. A little wisdom you can, you can share with whoever you'd like, and I'm sure, I'm sure you're going to love it and make sure that you do share it on your Facebook page or whatever. But did you know, why are cranberries red? Well, it's because they saw the turkey dressing. Yeah, I know. I know. Or how about, why didn't the pilgrim want to make the rolls for Thanksgiving dinner? Well, that's easy because it's a crummy job. Or how about, do you know what the turkey said to the turkey hunter? Quack, quack, quack. And I guess last but not least, I'll use this one. It's really helpful, I think. What did the baby corn say to the mama corn? Mama, where's popcorn? Yeah, I know. That's just a little bit of wisdom for Thanksgiving. But it's exciting. It's Thanksgiving. I mean, 2,500 meals. A chance to gather together volunteers from all over Kalamazoo, a chance to work together and make a difference in our community. Lots of things going on and just an awesome, awesome time on Thanksgiving. And so I thought maybe this morning you'd like to see maybe a little bit behind the scenes and see what goes on. And so I'm going to take you on a little tour and I, I'm going to show you kind of the, I'm going to call it the, the brains of the operation as it unfolds here. And we're going we're gonna to peek in on the people who pull together the addresses, the phone numbers, and make sure that everybody is online to get their meal and stuff. And so right in this room, we usually, again, Tammy and Craig, they come together and they, well, they usually have a table in here and, and it's set up, but, uh, well, I bet you they're goofing around. That's what it is. They're, I bet you they're out in the sanctuary because out in the sanctuary, what happens is uh, um, we get together and we put everybody in the room and then Jenny, Jenny Grenade, she gets out there and she helps them kind of organize and make sure they know where they're going. And so I'm guessing that Craig and Tammy and other people are out there waiting because they're just so excited. All this stuff going on. It's awesome. And so we'll go out here, we'll see all these volunteers, and we'll, uh, we'll, I'll take you over here, and we'll, we'll take a look. What? I'm not really sure. I'm not sure what's going on. Because nobody's up here either. I don't, none of the volunteers, and Jenny, and Craig, and Tammy, and, oh, I bet you it's Chris. Chris Grenade. He likes to pull my chain, and he works downstairs in the kitchen. Now, come on, we'll go look downstairs. I bet you're all hiding. They're getting donuts and coffee. They're having a good time, and they like to do this to me. They like to mess with me the whole time. So you come down here. It's amazing how these people work together, how we pull it all together, and then at the same time, we have a lot of fun because, again, they're pulling my leg, and, and I know that... Uh, I don't understand. I don't see anybody. And usually the assembly lines are set up already and, huh, I bet you Judd, Judd DeHaan is in the kitchen and he doesn't like me in there. And he and Greg always kick me out. And then again, with Chris involved with all the guys, whether that be Ben or whether it be Mike or Joe or Timmy or who or everybody, they're probably all hiding down here, and, and that's the way it is, and that's just kind of the craziness of, of what it is. But I bet you that's, I can't believe they're all crammed in there, and we're going to have to get up to speed quick. But it's Thanksgiving. It's awesome. We're having fun. Well, once again, nobody. 
I don't get it. I, I guess, I guess no thanksgiving. What, what in the world? I guess this is just kind of the icing on the cake. Or maybe it's the, the cherry on top of the Sunday, and that Sunday is one kind of crappy year, to be honest. Or maybe a crappy eight months. I mean, shelter in place for how long? Masks or no masks. Social distancing. I mean, for a guy like me who likes to hug people and connect, and I'm told, stay away. Then we got the election and we got riots. <coughs> we got no church off and on. I guess maybe Thanksgiving isn't going to happen. I mean, no school for kids or it's hybrid and it's all mixed up. I mean, let's be honest. If I was a high school senior, I'd say this year really sucks. Yeah, that's right. I'm going to get in trouble for saying that. But if I was a high school senior, that's what I would say. I guess no Thanksgiving. No Thanksgiving this year, 2020. It makes sense. It's been a crappy year. I mean, I've watched friends end friendships over the debate of COVID and masks and politics. I've watched churches divide, leaders leave, people move, all because of opinion or policy. I've watched families separated and broken I guess it makes sense. No Thanksgiving 2020. We might as well just turn the lights off, shut it down, go home, sit on the couch, have a TV dinner, and become mindless in the TV. Who needs, who needs Thanksgiving this year? And I got to be honest, it's been tough for me as a pastor. In almost 30 years of ministry, I have never faced anything like this. I've never seen division based on something outside of the church that's carried so much weight. I've never heard so many people question leadership, attack at points leadership, question and attack me people who I've built relationships with, people who, again, I've invested in and loved, suddenly find themselves leaving because they don't agree with something that's very political and really very, very not Christ-centered at all. I've found myself angry. I've found myself frustrated. I've found myself sad, and quite honestly, who needs any Thanksgiving? I guess no Thanksgiving 2020, that makes a whole lot of sense. That's why nobody's here. That's why nothing's happening, because you know what? Who cares? But then a few days ago, as I was reading God's Word, Scripture passage came to me. From Ephesians chapter 1, verses 15, following. It says, For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all of God's people, I've not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. And I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope 
to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance to his holy people. I've been here for over 20 years now at North Park. This past August, it was 20. I kind of expected a big party, but phew, nothing happened. But I guess that's COVID, right? Doesn't matter. We had a blast for 10-year anniversary for me. And maybe, who knows, maybe next year for 21, we'll have a big party. And as I think back in those 20 years, as I remember, I can remember that search committee meeting with them. I can remember them making fun of me and laughing because we went downtown to the Blue Dolphin because I wanted calamari, something spicy filled with garlic. All you Dutchmen didn't know what to do about that. I can remember having dinner with the search committee and I can remember Dennis Dehan being there and wearing one of the ugliest sweaters I've ever seen. I think it was an 80s Argyle sweater that he kept around. And as I arrived and as we began to do ministry, I can remember the hayride the first time. Going through that valley and outrun these two little miniature kind of people that are dressed up like witches running alongside the hay wagon, and here is much buck out. Jerry Hogendorn, those silly, crazy women, what were they thinking, and what were they doing? And then at joy groups after that, when they would dress up with the crazy old women, I'd never seen anything like it, and it made me laugh and feel like I was home. Or good old Jake Hogendorn with his especially this time of year, Christmas plaid pants, that little hat with a tassel on top. Dick and Dort Stapert, peanut brittle. I remember it well. Or vacation Bible school, kissing that cow to raise money or kissing that goat to raise money and then that poor goat jumping to its death because it had kissed me, I'm sure. Again, 20 years of ministry, of living together, of being together. Do you remember the demolition car to raise money for Kids Hope? I can remember everybody getting involved. I can remember out in the yard setting off the airbags and shooting candy up into the air for the kids. <laughs> what a great time. Auctions, cook-offs, potlucks. Or what about Janice's cookies or Shirley's lemon bars or Laura's healthy snacks as I've changed my <coughs> way of eating? And then, of course, there's always the men's class, which has been a blessing for many, despite all the wisdom of Doug Staper. And then the sedation suite project at the hospital or the journey bead project for kids with cancer or couples nights out, living life together, doing ministry here, I started remembering. Remembering the laughter and the tears. Remembering the tragedies and the joys. Remembering the weddings and the funerals. Wow! Giving thanks and remembering you all, all of us together, and giving thanks, and giving thanks, despite what's been going on, we have a choice, and that is to be thankful or thankless. This year hasn't been easy. And yet we still have so much to be thankful for. In ministry, I'll be honest, it's been tough. And like I said at points, I haven't wanted to be here. Because I didn't understand. Because I was hurt. 
because I am frustrated in all of this. And yet as I read these words, and as I remembered 20 years of ministry, I couldn't help but give thanks for all of you. Thanks for God's blessing upon this place called North Park. Thanks for the ministry and impact that we have had. And so I find myself this morning praying that amidst all that's been COVID, amidst all that's been politics, amidst all the articles from doctors, politicians, scientists, and everything, that the Father might give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you might know him better. I really don't care if you know President Biden better or President Trump better, but I care if you know Jesus better. I don't care whether or not you know whether or not masks work or don't work. I care that you know Jesus better. I don't really care where that political stance is. What I care about is, do you know Jesus better? Do you have the wisdom to get through this world, to get through the rest of this year, and be godly Christ followers? Or to take it a step further, that your eyes, the eyes of your heart, might be enlightened in order that you know the hope that God has called you to. Hope. Not despair, not fear, not anxiety, not opinion, not argument, not debate, not soundbite. Hope in Jesus. That even though this has been a difficult year, a better thing is coming. A better day, a better future, a better eternity because of the love of God in Jesus Christ. Again, I'm tired of thinking about how crappy this year is. I'm tired of thinking about all the woundedness, all the pain, all the suffering, all the struggles. And it makes me smile to think about ministry with all of you, to think about God's blessing in this place and in my life, a place where I've raised my kids, a place where we have again laughed together, where I've baptized children together, where I've watched children grow and married them. God is good. And I choose to be thankful and to celebrate Thanksgiving in 2020 and to smile and to laugh. I am blessed. We are blessed and we should be thankful in 2020. A wonderful theologian and commentator by the name of Matthew Henry shared a story about his life. And it was later in life that he was actually attacked, he was beat up, and he was robbed. And yet shortly after that event, he began to pray. And as crazy as it sounds, it was a prayer of thanksgiving. And he said this, he prayed that he was thankful that he had never ever before in his life been robbed and beaten. He was thankful that they only took his purse and not his life. He was thankful that they took everything. But everything 
wasn't very much. And he was thankful that he was robbed. And he was not the one who robbed someone else. In the midst of that suffering and struggle, thankful. And so for you and I in 2020, the question is, is it going to be a thankless giving today? Or is it going to be a thankful thanksgiving today? I choose to no longer live being frustrated and angry and hurt and instead choose to pray for all of you, for my family, for each of us, that we might know the wisdom of God, the very revelation of Jesus, and the hope to face whatever might come. I don't know what 2000 and 21 will look like. I don't know whether or not this place will continue to do ministry. Who knows what the future holds, but you know what? God is good. And I am blessed to have done ministry and continue to do ministry with all of you because of the power of God at work in us. So happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. And may you have a blessed and wonderful day. Amen. Well, um, it has been an unprecedented year. Crazy. With all the... the this stuff? Yeah. It's unprecedented how many times we've actually heard the word unprecedented. <laughs> Our dream vacation was canceled. You got to keep the job you don't like. Uh-huh. You know they can see you? But well, let me tell you all the no's, friends. Um, no going to restaurants, no movie theaters, no movie theater popcorn, no state parks, no going to athletic events, no church services, and no... Don't say it. Don't. Hey, kids! You've got to be more careful with the toilet paper! This is all we have. All the drive-by birthday parties, graduations, <laughs> baby showers. I will say this, I felt a little awkward throwing out that baby shower gift into the front yard. You weren't supposed to do that. It just feels like a wasted year. I said it, I said it. Yeah, there's just all the time at home. Boom! And all the time that we were made to spend together. Hey, honey. All the heart to hearts. Mm. Goodness. Speaking of hearts, our son Jason right over there said yes to Jesus. Right at that kitchen table. July 17th, 2020. You know, I guess it's not really wasted time because God didn't waste a moment of it. <laughs> I think I have the answer to what I'm thankful for. Yeah? Yeah. What is it? Everything. Everything. Happy Thanksgiving, kids. And hey, welcome to a strange place. Not really. If you kind of look around a little bit, you'll notice that, hey, Pinewood Derby from, hmm, let me think now, hmm, hmm, March of this year. That's right. Our world has changed so much, but I want you to know you are loved. And just about every day I come down here and I look at these and I think of all of you. But today is Thanksgiving. And so again, it's that special day where we say happy Thanksgiving. And we are glad to be able to give thanks. 
So I wanted to talk to you about Thanksgiving, and guess what? I brought balloons because I wanted to remind you Thanksgiving, but also this balloon, well, it doesn't look very inflated, now does it? And what I want you to think about is, I want you to think about this balloon being you or me. And when we're thankful, when we are thankful, we think again about the wonderful blessings of our lives, something special happens. Boy, when we think, you know, I have a mom or dad, grandmas or grandpas that really love me, and guess what? <laughs> that makes me feel pretty good. Or maybe I have a really good teacher at school and he or she loves me and is invested in me and wow, that makes me feel good. Huh, I have a dog. I have a cat. I have a bird. I don't know, a fish. Who knows what, but a pet that truly loves me and every time I come home happy to see me, these things fill up our lives. Maybe even today, you're going to be blessed because you're going to have some turkey. Maybe you're going to have some stuffing. Maybe you're going to have some corn, some potatoes, some dessert, maybe pie or ice cream. And you realize your mom and dad, they take good care of you. My word, when we're thankful and we realize how blessed we are, our lives and our heart get bigger and bigger and bigger and it's awesome but something else is true that when we complain it's not fair my brother or my sister got it and i didn't uh-oh we get a little smaller it's not fair I didn't get the teacher I wanted, and that doesn't, oh, that doesn't make me happy. Oh, smaller yet again. Boy, oh boy, it's not fair because they can have a dog or a cat. I can't have anything. Oh, it's getting worse and worse. When we're not thankful, pretty soon, that's it. So this morning, I want you to think about Happy Thanksgiving, being thankful and making a difference and telling people how thankful you are because the other option isn't very good. Again, happy Thanksgiving. And we're going to spend a little bit of time in prayer. As I thought about praying, I wanted to turn to what is an old, old song, an old hymn entitled, Now Thank We All Our God. And it's the first couple lines that always stick in my mind. It says, Now thank we all our God with heart and hands and voices who wondrous things have done in whom his world rejoices. As we go to prayer, I just, again, want us to really engage. Paul's prayer to the Ephesians was that our eyes, the eyes of our heart would be open to see hope. And I believe it would be that our hands would be able to grasp the presence and the power of Jesus and that our voices might be able to offer up prayer and thanksgiving because we need to rejoice. And we need to give thanks. So let's pray together this morning. Lord God, we come to you on this Thanksgiving day. A day in which, quite honestly, it would be or could be easy to be thankless. Quite honestly, given some changes of late, maybe we don't have as many family members with us. Maybe people can't be together feels different and strange and by golly i just don't want to be thankful and yet your word says rejoice always i'll say it again rejoice everything 
it with thanksgiving, prayer, and supplication. Lord, help us to be thankful people. Even in 2020, even after eight months of craziness and probably a few more months to come, Lord, keep us together as your people. Because we have a story to tell to the nation. Because we have a light to shine within the darkness. Because we have salt that brings a new flavor to our world. Lord, we have come to be agents of change, not to be changed by the junk of this world. And so, Lord, help us to be thankful. Thankful for a place like North Park. A place that has put up with me for 20 plus years. A place that has done crazy ministry that I'm sure some forefathers and mothers would have never thought would happen. And yet it was for your glory and your honor. Thank you for the people that are North Park. People who again, through thick and thin, have stepped up to do ministry. And Lord, even though we have had a season of struggles, even though we've had a season of some people leaving, Lord, God is good. And we continue to be Christ-centered. And we continue to come together as your people. And you'll bless that as we move forward. Bless the families of this church, Lord. Each one dealing with its own struggles and challenges, whether they be health and well-being, whether they be jobs and economy, whether they be school and, again, social world, whatever it might be, Lord, that you would bless and strengthen them so that you might, again, receive the glory and the honor and they might give thanks. Lord, that you might bless our community. That Kalamazoo might rise above. And only a few short years ago that there were significant tragedies in this community. And within those tragedies came the saying, Kalamazoo strong. I don't think it's any different today. That as a community, Lord, we need to be strong regardless of color, regardless of religion, regardless of socioeconomic placement, Lord, we need to come together and to bring hope into the world and a future. And so, Lord, today is a day of thanksgiving. In my mind of changing our attitude to one of gratitude and looking forward to a future that can be bright, filled with possibilities. And so, Lord, we give you thanks. We praise your name. And we ask you to help us find your wisdom, your revelation, and above all, your hope and your joy. And celebrate Thanksgiving 2020. Amen.